These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Let's start with this molecule. Would you say this is a chiral molecule or an achiral molecule? I want to say achiral. achiral because there are no stereocenters, right? That's a good answer, and that's a really good reason as well. So there's a bunch of different ways to figure out whether something is achiral or not, but you used the best shortcut. The best shortcut is to look for stereocenters. You're right, there's no stereocenters. So it's an achiral molecule. So does this molecule have an enantiomer? Okay, an enantiomer, I, I, don't, I like haven't done this in a while. Okay, well everything has a mirror image, right? right? Because anything, I guess, except for vampires, because except for vampires, everyone could look in the mirror and see their mirror image, all right? Everyone has a mirror image. However, many objects are the same as their mirror image. You might say like a normal object is the same as its uh, mirror image. So for example, if, um, if the letter A looked in a mirror, it would, see the it would just see the letter A. It's the same so as an its uh, mirror image. Um, so actually, we haven't quite gotten to the oh. enantiomers yet. Um, so what was I trying to say here? Um, maybe that wasn't a good example. OK, yeah. Um, However, there are some things that are different from their mirror images, like your hands. Right. For example, we know that your right hand is the mirror image of your left hand, but we know they're not the same. For example, you can tell that because a right hand glove wouldn't fit on a left hand. Right. All right. So um, we need. Uh, so we don't need different words for these two things because they're the same. But we do need words to describe the relationship between mirror images that are not the same, and that is enantiomers. Mm -hmm. So enantiomers are a pair of mirror images that are not the same molecule. Enantiomers are a pair of mirror images that are not the same molecule. A pair of mirror images that are not the same molecule. Okay. Remember, the way that we test whether they're the same is by asking whether we could superimpose one of them on the other. We could superimpose this A on this A, but you cannot superimpose your left hand on your right hand. There's no way to superimpose so your right and left hand are enantiomers. That's right. Your right okay. and left hand are enantiomers. That's right. Okay. Now you told me here this was a chiral molecule, but maybe you didn't really know what what does a chiral what is a chiral molecule? What is an a chiral molecule? Well, a uh, a a chiral molecule is something that is the same as its mirror image. And a chiral molecule is something that is different from its mirror image. A chiral means that you're the same as your mirror image, and a chiral molecule is something that is different from its mirror image. By the way, to remember that, chire is Greek for hands. Like, you know, like, like a chiropractor is somebody who works on your muscles with their hands. Mm -hmm. So chire means hands. Well, a chiral molecule is something that's like your hands. If it's chiral, it's like your hands in the sense that it's different than, your mirror, than, it, it's, different than its mirror image. Okay. And an achiral molecule is something that's not like hands, which means that uh, it's not like hands because it's the same as its mirror image. Okay. So another way of putting it is, um, who has enantiomers? Chiral molecules or achiral molecules? Chiral. Right. I think that was the question I asked you a couple seconds ago. Does this have an enantiomer? Well, basically, since it's achiral, that means it can't have an enantiomer. In fact, those are pretty much synonyms for each other. So that's another definition for chiral and achiral. We could say the definition of a chiral molecule is something that has an enantiomer, like a hand. And the definition of an achiral molecule is something that has no enantiomer, like the letter A. Right. Okay. I guess actually all the letters are achiral, though, because uh, they're two-dimensional. I think if something's, uh, if something's in only two dimensions, I don't think there's any way to make it chiral. So maybe that was the best example. But anyway, um, let's see here. So this has no 
enantiomer. Now, this is what's very important. Now, at this point in the class, you're not studying stereochemistry anymore, but you still need this for predicting the products. Because oftentimes your instructor will say, draw all possible products, including stereoisomers, and you have to decide whether something has stereoisomers or not. For example, there's many reactions that will produce both a molecule and the enantiomer if it exists. And then you have to figure out whether something has an enantiomer or not. OK. Well, um, this has no enantiomer. And you saw the easiest way to figure that out. The easiest way to see that is because this has no stereocenters. Um, I've, of course, the other way to do this is you could just try drawing the mirror image of this and see if you can superimpose them. But that, that takes a long time to actually draw the mirror image each time and see if you can superimpose them. So stereocenters are a shortcut. Stereocenters are a shortcut that make it easier to tell whether something has an enantiomer or okay. not. OK, so um, we said this has no stereocenters. It's achiral, so it has no enantiomer. So um, is this a chiral molecule or an achiral molecule? And how do you know it's a chiral molecule? Well, because when the wedge looks in the mirror, it's going to see a dash. Depending on where you put the mirror. Now, um, so you're, you're trying to figure that out. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Is this a chiral molecule or an achiral molecule? Oh, that one's chiral because we don't bond. That's right. OK, you're on the right track. So we need to streamline that approach. We need a fast way to tell whether this is a chiral. Now, I think what you're trying to do is you're trying to um, visualize the mirror image and ask if you can superimpose it. Well, that, that would be a good thing for you to do as homework. But remember that we'd like a shortcut that allows us to tell whether something's chiral without doing all that visualization. And stereocenters are a shortcut. Does this molecule have any stereocenters? Yeah. That indicates that it's chiral. Okay. And that way, you don't need to bother with visualizing so the mirror image. So is that chiral, too? Well, let's take it step by step. That's a good question. So let's go back up to this for a second. This has one stereocenter. And that proves that it's a chiral molecule without us having to do any actual drawing of the mirror image and rotating that around. Now, does this molecule have any stereocenters? Yeah. Let's review. What's the definition of a stereocenter? Oh, no, it doesn't because both sides are this. Oh, got it. OK. All right. So does this have stereocenters? No. So is it a chiral or a chiral a molecule? Chiral. OK, a chiral. So I just wanted to point out, I, I think for a second ago, you might have been using an uh, a incorrect method for determining whether something's chiral. You were just focusing on whether it had any wedges or dashes. Yeah. But a common instructor trap is to put in a molecule that, with wedges and dashes that still, not a, does, still doesn't have stereocenters. So you can't just look for wedges and dashes. You have to actually look for stereocenters. So this is not a stereocenter <coughs> because it's not attached to four different groups. Because if we go down this path, that's the same as going down the right-hand path. On the other hand, over here, the left-hand path is different from the right-hand path because in the left-hand path, you quickly hit the double bond. And on the right-hand path, you don't hit the double bond for a long time. OK. So what we're seeing here is that stereocenters are a trick that makes it much faster to tell whether something is chiral without doing all that difficult visualization. Okay. Uh, which is good because we don't have to spend too much time going over stereochemistry again. All right, so this is yeah. chiral. Um, and we decided, was this chiral or achiral? Achiral. Because there's no stereocenters. Right. All right. So again, don't just look for wedges and dashes. Right. Yeah, there's no All right, fine. now. Now we're going to try to figure out whether this is chiral or achiral. Well, does this have any stereocenters? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, how many stereocenters does it have? Two. So based on our previous work, it would seem like we would be thinking that this is chiral. But now we have to learn that there is one time that stereocenters don't indicate chirality. Um, when it's a mirror image. Oh, yeah, like when there's a plane of symmetry. When there's a plane of symmetry, then even if you have stereocenters, you'll still be achiral. Does this molecule have a plane of symmetry? Yeah. Yeah. Is the plane of symmetry horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Yeah. Here's the plane of symmetry. So we can imagine that this is a mirror. If the top half of the molecule looked in the mirror, this, is the, this bottom half is the exact picture it would see. So this really is a plane of symmetry for this molecule. So then it's achiral. 
So that means it's an a chiral molecule. It turns out that any molecule with a plane of symmetry has to be a chiral. We're not going to prove that. We're just going to memorize that. Any molecule with a plane of symmetry has to be an a chiral molecule. That's good. So does this have an enantiomer? No. I forgot to mention that over here. Does this molecule have an enantiomer? Yes. Because that's the definition of chiral, right. right? But this one does not 